Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing well. Today we are doing another cheap part exchange video and the car we are talking about is this 2006 Honda CRV that we've taken a part exchange for just £500. On the face of it, this actually looks really quite nice and I really like these CRVs, especially this age. I actually quite like these more than the newer generations. Some of the funky kind of like really Japanese quirky features in them, which we'll get into in a minute and I think just generally it looks really good value, 500 quid for this, which is actually like really straight. Give the headlights a buff up and it would look really good. But there are, as there always are, a few issues with this. So let's have a quick walk around. We'll kind of just show you the condition of the car. Um, we'll have a look inside. We'll pop the bonnet, I suppose. That's customary, isn't it? And then we'll take it for a drive and I'll tell you why we might have other plans for this. So wheels could do with a clean, but they're actually looking pretty good condition. We've got a Rotala tire on there with pretty decent tread, to be honest. Um, Bodywork down the side, there's a few little minor scratches and stuff, but on the whole for what is a, what was it, 18 year old car? Pretty damn good. We've got an Accelera, something else, Eco Plus on the back. Again, pretty decent amount of tread. It's got to be six mil on there. Oh, looks pretty good. We've even still got our original Honda spare wheel cover which looks in really good condition it hasn't been bounced off of anything which tends to happen uh, it's got a tow bar which could be useful it is the icdti so it's a 2.2 diesel but look just how nice these lights and everything are for the age looks pretty decent actually paintwork all really straight another accelerator on there and have we got a matching whatever it was Rotala. No, we've got something else. This one looks a bit cracked and it's quite worn on the shoulder there. Still a decent amount of tread, but a bit worn. So you might want to end up putting new tires on there. Give the headlights a buff. And other than that, pretty straight really, isn't it? What was that scratch in there? I oh, know, it's just uh, cobwebs. So yeah, on the whole, 109,000, two keys, service history, 500 quid absolute bargain so we'll have a look inside we have got two keys as i say remote central locking seems to work it's actually reasonably clean in there i did get the valeters to give this just a very very basic clean in we would just chuck a bucket over it basically for a part exchange they haven't gone crazy but it didn't need a huge amount either it's a manual it's got a very funky like center folding armrest thing which i really like and it's got a very bizarre handbrake let me show you that this would take some getting used to for sure because it's like out of the dashboard you keep going down here to reach for it and what you end up reaching for is your funky little tray which i haven't even deployed yet look at that there's your cup holders your little phone tray or whatever but if you want it out of the way how japanese is that it's just like the cool box in the dashboard as well not quite sure what you get in there maybe a couple of cans and you can just pump the air conditioning into there so it's obviously got air conditioning, it's got cruise control, it's got steering wheel controls, it's got a electric sunroof as well, which we probably need the ignition on to do. So I guess this is quite, oh, let's just pop. There we do, there we do, there we go. Let's pop that open if you like a sunroof. I'm not that fussed to be honest. That's, it's a bit annoying, you can't just press it and it will go down, you have to hold it. Shocking. For the money spent so it's actually quite a decent spec isn't it we've got armrests on the front as well and original book locking wheel nut key look at that paperwork absolutely stacks of it there let's have a quick look in the service book how many owners three keepers in its 18 year life let's see what it's saying as i say 109,106 miles it was last on 103,000 miles last year. So not bad at all. And in 2018, it had a major service, fuel pump and two injectors. I guess that was the last one though. All sorts of MOT slips and receipts and stuff in there. Let's have a quick look in the back. I don't know whether these seats do anything clever like they quite often do in Japanese cars. And sometimes you can fold them up if it's a Civic, but I expect they fold down. I expect they fold down and then concertina out of the way. It's pretty standard that, to be honest though, isn't it? But quite a practical little car. Decent amount of space in the back. Got a center armrest with cup holders and an absolutely huge boot. 
So, oh look, it's even got a split rear screen. What's so I think it is? A bloody Range Rover? How do we do that? Look at that! Loading your shopping in. It's, uh, it's quite specky this, to be fair. Pretty huge boot, actually. I mean, it's the same sort of size boot you'd get on like something huge like an Audi Q7. Have we got more seats or something in here? Push that. No, just a spare wheel well, although there's no spare wheel in there because it's on the outside. So extra storage again, I guess. So the real question is why am I not so keen on this? I would have been, but the main issue is that when you fire this thing up, it smokes like a chimney. And I just don't wanna get involved with fixing things like that. I don't know what it'd be like now because it has been started up. But we'll fire it up and just see if we get any smoke from it. Good old Japanese car, I probably won't need to put my foot on the clutch. Little bit there. I think Toby will impose some uh, shots here of it smoking like absolute crazy. Um, what that would be, I don't know. Do I want to find out? Not really, because there's probably some other issues with this as well. In fact, before it gets too hot, let's have a little nosy under the bonnet and see what's happening under there. I mean, it all looks all right, didn't it? It is hot, it has been moved around, so I can't really undo the coolant. We can have a quick look. Never undo these bloody things. Without getting tools out, I'm not going to get that off, and so I just can't really be bothered. Suppose we could have a quick look at the dipstick, which looks all right actually. Quite nice and viscous and runny, though it is hot. So, but otherwise, seems all right. There's nothing jumping out here that says it's really bad news. So. We'll head out on the road and we'll find out what else might be wrong with this cheap part exchange. In fact, before we do that, should we do a quick vehicle score on this? Because I seem to remember it's got quite a bit of MOT on it. Would be another reason I'd probably want to sell it, but... Right, so as usual, I'm going to head to vehiclescore.co.uk and I'm going to enter our registration, which is Whiskey Mike 06 Alpha Papa Oscar. And it is going to give us a score from 1 to 999. Ours is 276. Not great, it says, 206 below average. I guess that's to do with this MOT history. So let's just skip straight down to that. 77% pass rate. The last one it passed, but it had quite a few advisories. Near side front tire, worn close to the legal limit on edge. Well, we saw that, didn't we? Offside rear position lamp has product on the lens. Didn't notice that so much. Brake pedal has slight travel. Near side rear suspension arm, pin nor bush is worn. Rear brake disc is worn. Near side front suspension arm, pin or bush worn, offside rear suspension, near side front track rod end, and offside registration lamp inoperative in the case of multiple lamps or light sources. So it's quite a few advisories on there. And prior to that, it failed headlamp, suspension arm, suspension component. There's not a huge amount of signs here for rust, but yeah, it's definitely had quite a few advisories. Now, if I was going to be going out and looking to buy this, of course, I'd want to do a history check on it. And you can do that with Vehicle Score. You can choose from either of their two history reports. The Salvage Report for £2.95, but I highly recommend the Ultimate Plus Report for £11.95. And don't forget to use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20 to get 20% off, and it will do the checks for loads of things on whether this has been imported or exported, whether it has finance against it, whether it's been seen at a salvage auction, whether it's got a category marker against it, and loads of other things you're going to want to know before you hand over your hard-earned cash. Get it checked out. It's also got a load of free features as well, like checking your MOT history, mileage tracker, and the AI mechanic. So it's just really handy to have saved on your phone. Right, let's head out on the road and see how it drives. I remember what the other thing was that was not so great with this now. It's like these daredevil brakes. They are not very good at all. They do work once you've realized how little, that's another problem we'll get to, how little they work, you've got an idea of being able to stop safely. It's actually the first time I've driven this in 
it's very flat for a 2.2 and it sounds like it's got a boost leak which might explain the white smoke hopefully you can hear that it sounds very asthmatic not really seeing any smoke coming out of it at the moment though but maybe it's been doing that for a while it's uh I don't know caused the EGR to block a little or something I don't know so yeah it it doesn't go very well it doesn't stop very well there's so much travel on that pedal it's like really disconcerting when you put your foot in a pedal you want a nice hard surface to kind of push against and this is going a long way before it actually well I haven't bottomed it out but yeah it's just not not very good at all and something tells me that's not just brake pads or discs I think maybe like a servo or something I could be wrong I'm not a mechanic as we all know but normally you still have a bit of a pedal even if if uh, you've got low pads. Now the other thing you may have heard as I was pulling off the forecourt is there's quite a bit of drive shaft noise as well. We might even have a... Oh it's, oh, it's coming on boost now and it's also kicking out the smoke so... There is... Yeah, boost or EGR problems or something. Yeah, I would try and find somewhere I can kind of like drive this slowly. Maybe if we go around the corner here, you can hear it making horrendous noises. It's annoying and I am got to stop myself these days because it'd be very tempting to put a set of distant pads on this all the way around. Probably wouldn't be that expensive. Um, what else do we need to do? That might solve the brakes, it might not. Then, what else do we say? But give it, you know, a good clean, polish up the headlights. Um, what else do we say was wrong with it? Mm, can't remember, it's got a lot of advisors on it. People are always going to pick at that. It's never going to be a super clean example again now. Even though, oh, I forgot about how bad the brakes were. Even though it's cosmetically quite clean. Yeah, it's never gonna have a great history, but you would spend not a lot of money in order to get this. Oh, obviously, yeah, the, the kind of boost leak. You'd have to look into that. It could well be a simple fix, and you'd have quite a decent profit in this. It's got to be two thousand pounds, doesn't it? If not more, sorted out. But I have turned a new leaf, and I'm just not getting involved with this sort of stuff. I just don't want to know about it. Oh, you would need a drive shaft as well, wouldn't you? If that's all it is, it could be a diff. Um, it's just making so many weird noises, this car. We've got it going whoosh, Which I hope you can hear. It sounds like maybe there's a wheel bearing on the way out, or maybe that is a bit of diff wine. And then when we turn at low speeds, it's making clonking noises. So, does our radio even work? over on the CBB's channel tonight. Works quite well actually. And the air conditioning works really well, that I have to say. And the cool box is very cool. This is the sort of stuff I would have loved in my early days because it's pretty straightforward mechanical stuff to sort, isn't it? Other than maybe the whatever it is, boost leak, EGR pipe split or something. Still probably quite straightforward. Uh, and it still looks quite straight and it's got some value to it, but I just don't want the headaches anymore. So, really, I'd like to send this to auction. Sophie may take it and put it on our Shifting Metal Part Exchange Gold Facebook group and trade it on there for someone who does want to fix it up, but can we... I'll try and turn here and see if it does it going right. Oh yeah, that's on the back. Yeah, I would say that's the uh, diff. Mm, yeah, definitely better off heading to auction, this one, I think. Is there controls for the diff on this? No, I don't think so. 
for all I know it's not even a four wheel drive. I guess it must be if it's skipping like that at the rear. I'm fairly certain if these come in a two wheel drive version, it's front wheel drive, not rear wheel drive, but I could be wrong. But yeah, that's pretty horrendous. It's not too bad when you move in at speed. Still, I don't think for 500 quid, you know, we've gone too far wrong. I can't remember what this was part exchanged against. Um, I really can't remember, it's been a little while now. It might have been something like a cash car, I think. Oh, actually, even when you accelerate like that, then you can feel, I guess it's the diff, kind of skipping, knocking or something. So maybe it's a drive shaft on the diff. I'll try turning here again. I'll try going left this time. Oh god. Hmm. Not ideal, I have to say. Funny enough, that of all the things with this car is what concerns me the most. I feel like you get parts for your boost. You would get dis and pads for it, but it feels like now I've agitated that diff, it's even worse. It's doing it as we're just driving along now. You probably can't hear it, but I can feel it through the seat just doop, 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 doop. It could just be a drive shaft, but it could be a diff, and you know, who knows whether you can find one that's right for sensible money. So, I think we are best off just sending this to auction. It's a quite refreshing feeling thinking that when you take some of these cheap bike exchanges in, there's an old mindset in me that makes me want to try and make maximum profit out of absolutely everything. Otherwise, I feel like I'm wasting profit and, you know, letting money slip through my fingers and being wasteful. But actually, yeah, it's really knocking around on the back now. It's really a really weird sensation, actually. It's very refreshing to feel like, Do you know what, I can just send that on and even if I get my money back or even if I lose 50 quid it facilitated a good deal and we're gonna move it straight on to another deal it's a very simple straightforward kind of philosophy really and it's probably quite obvious business practice to have but sometimes it's very hard convincing yourself anyway I guess that will be it for this video there's not gonna be any great reveal where we clean this up or fix it and tell you how much it's cost me so far it's cost me that was one of our technicians taking a car out for a test drive uh, it's cost me 500 pounds um, I'm gonna send it to auction so if you haven't subscribed already make sure you do not only will you probably get an update on this in one of our weekly videos I'll tell you how much it sold for at auction or via trade on our shifty metal part exchange gold page if that's where it goes I'm still not decided yet probably just auction maybe i'll drop it off at auction tomorrow uh i'll give you an update on there but not only that of course we're also giving away that really nice tudor watch the sister company of rolex is a four thousand pound watch absolutely gorgeous i'm giving it away completely free when we get to 100 000 subscribers we did the same thing at 75 000 subscribers and martin shaw one of our subscribers won a very nice two thousand pound tag for your watch i mean what's there to lose it's free to subscribe and it would really help us out on top of that, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to check out my 730D BMW that is currently being raffled on my website, feelgoodcompetitions.com, for just a pound. On top of that, if you buy 20 tickets, you'll get 10 for free on top, and you can get an extra 10% off with the code TOBY10. I think that's all I've got to tell you in this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.